There are times we learn some really, really interesting things from Nintendo. Things that I didn't know I wanted to know until those things are stated. And this time we learned something from Shigeru Miyamoto. And look, we don't hear from him very often. Usually it's just for marketing purposes, right? Going out there and advertising Nintendo theme parks and movies and all that kind of stuff. Every now and then he might chime in at an investor's meeting like he did Recently at a shareholders meeting where he talked about, you know, how he's passed the torch on to a younger generation as someone was like, hey, you're getting old. Are you going to still make games? And what happens basically when you die? Kind of a really weird question being thrown at him, but uh, he handled it like a champion. But that's not what we're here to talk about because he revealed a secret about Nintendo, something that we didn't know that is vital to Nintendo's business strategy and directly involves, obviously, us spending money, buying consoles, buying games. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. So we have a thread going on here over at Reset Era about this. And here's what he says here. He says he's not saying that anything under $30 million is a failure. Relax. They're trying to calm people down. If you look at the headline of this thread at Reset Era, it says, Miyamoto, if we, Nintendo, can have one big hit, i.e. $30 plus million, seller every three to five years will be fine. Now, what are the exact quotes? Well, as we scroll down here, it says, Miyamoto, if we can have one big hit every three to five years, we'll be fine. In that sense, if all our employees think about creating a big hit every day, we'll be fine. iToy comes in. This is one of those combo interviews that iToy, yes, the Earthbound series guy Miyamoto did together. It says, well, for Nintendo, one million units is not considered a huge hit. Miyamoto says, I agree. Then iToy comes out here and goes, oh, it only sold 1 million copies? Laughs. In that case, roughly how many titles do you consider to be big hits, Mr. Miyamoto? Miyamoto chimes in, about 30 million. Everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Miyamoto comes in, well, we're working to make it happen. So if it breaks even, we should consider it a failure. But it seems like everyone talks as if it's breaking even iToy comes in, well, I wonder about that in today's society. I think there are a lot of places where people would say it was a break-even and a good experience. Miyamoto comes in and says, is that so? But if there's no profit and we're just breaking even, then it's just tiring, right? I'm sure the people who worked with me would think that's not what we worked for. So the reason why I don't praise my co-workers half-heartedly along the way is because, anyway, the reason I think it was good to work with them is because we sell a lot. Miyamoto then comes in and says, I worked really hard and I just got to get my money's worth. I don't make things or do things just to get my money's worth. I think everyone works hard every day to make something that sells, becomes a big hit and makes people say, I can't stop laughing. Miyamoto continues, as we make various preparations, there are times when something catches our attention and we think, huh, or this might be something that will turn out well. We can sense such things from the very beginning. However, if we are only thinking about greed or waiting to stabilize our profits, we will overlook this. iToy chimes in, yes, if you are only motivated by greed, you will think first about how to avoid losing money. You will inevitably think in terms of break-even point. Miyamoto comes in and says, that's right. I think the most dangerous thing is to miss something that has the potential to grow. I think the good thing about our company is we've been good at nurturing those seeds. Now, here you get some context here. These would be considered big sellers for Nintendo. I mean, look, all of us would consider probably even more games big sellers. But this is according to Miyamoto and the way Nintendo's logic works. 30 plus million in sales. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's the list for Switch. That's it. Those are the only games Nintendo considers to be big sellers. Now, a lot of us would call those mega sellers and big sellers like Mario Odyssey at 26 million and stuff, I think would be a big deal and was clearly profitable for Nintendo. However, there is that 30 million mark that I find really, really interesting. Now, we have to sit back here and go, man, Miyamoto sounds way different in this interview, in this setting than he's ever done before. One thing to remember is that iToy is a personal friend of his, and I really apologize if I'm butchering the enunciation of his name, but they're really, really good friends. So he's going to talk much more casual and much more freely. And what's interesting hearing this is this is all business related. Like he's like, hey, we can't just make games with a sense of greed. 
But yeah, if a game breaks even, we do think at Nintendo that's a failure. And breaking even means it only made enough money to cover the cost of development and marketing, right? So uh, when you hear you know things like, oh, Nintendo was disappointed in the sales of Skyward Sword back in the day on Wii, you have to wonder, hey, was that one of those break-even games? Like, yeah, they weren't going to just stop the Zelda series off one failed entry, but and again, failed entry being one that wasn't profitable, but that doesn't mean that, you know, they were going to stop making things. It means that, hey, maybe we got to take a whole new direction. And that's what they did, led to Breath of the Wild. I do think that uh, this is a rare look at the inside of Nintendo's world, where essentially, as long as they get a 30 plus million seller every three to five years, Nintendo thinks they're sitting pretty damn pretty. And if they fail to get one every three to five, so let's say they get eight years from now, from right now today, eight years down the line, they don't have another 30 million selling game. Nintendo is going to feel like they are not in a good place. Even if they have a whole bunch of 10 million, 15, 20 million plus, if they're not getting that 30 plus million seller, they're going to feel like they're losing audience and losing mind share they're not saying they need 30 million in sales to be profitable okay this isn't sony or ubisoft or all some of these other companies where they're spending 200 300 400 500 million dollars to make a game no no this is nintendo zelda is the biggest budget game they make that game covers the cost quite easily most of their games are made for 100 million or less um, I would say almost all of them are made for under $100 million because Nintendo values their employees and they keep them on full time and they don't have to do a bunch of you know, temporary hires for every project. They just move people around within the company. Hello, Monolith Soft, helping on everything from Pokemon to Zelda to Mario, obviously making Xenoblade. So yeah, like Nintendo just sh shifts internal staff around rather than going nuts and hiring on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people for every dang project and having them all leave right after, right? That's Western development. Nintendo doesn't participate in that sort of stuff outside of Retro Studios. And actually, we don't really know about that other Next Level Games company. We're not really sure how they're managed internally. We know more about Retro Studios than them. Hopefully, they run more like the rest of Nintendo, but Retro Studios has always been one of those. We just hire for a given project. People leave. Uh, very traditional, very expensive way to make games. Metroid Prime 4 probably is one of the most expensive games Nintendo's ever made. Uh, if that game only breaks even, I, I do worry for the future of the Metroid series uh, because, like, Other M was kind of the same thing. Like, I'm sure, uh, you know, Metroid Dread was probably profitable, so you could see more side-scrolling games, but, man, if this one, after Other M, also only is, like, a break-even kind of game, <sighs> I mean, look... They're going all out. It looks like they're going all out. Triple A full development for Metroid Prime 4. So here's hoping. Anyways, just, just wanted to bring this up because I feel like this is a really important time for Nintendo. We're entering a transition to the next system. Uh, there's likely nothing else Nintendo's going to release at this point that's going to sell 30 million units over here on Nintendo Switch. So everything's about making sure Switch 2 is successful and making sure they have games on it that sell that well heck i mean can we get a pokemon game up there we, we haven't had a pokemon game cross 30 million in forever so maybe now it's time for that game to take over i don't know guys thank you so much for tuning in i hope you really enjoyed this video a bit of a shorter one for you but i am technically still on vacation the final day although for you guys i'm technically not back to normal work until july 1st uh, but i hope you enjoyed the video hope you're enjoying the updates you guys are awesome and i'll catch you in the next one <laughs>